Hello to current and future leaders. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of The Big Idea. I'm your host, Jason Seymour. I'm the spokesperson for the US mission to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. This show got started because I was so eager to talk to Southeast Asian leaders who are making an impact, have big ideas, want to make changes, and there are so many. So I appreciate you so much for joining us for this conversation with our special guest of the day, and that is Fami Azad. Welcome to the program, Fami. Hi. Hi, Mr. Jason. Um, I'm happy to be in this program and thanks for inviting. Selamat petang from Malaysia. My pleasure, my pleasure. And I already feel like we're friends. We've had such good conversations before the show. You are doing amazing, amazing work and I'm so thrilled that you're here. So we want to get right to it. One of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you is you have been involved with another number of programs with ABIM, which is the Muslim Student Youth Movement. Let me make sure I have that right. M Muslim, Muslim youth, youth Movement. Muslim Youth Movement in Malaysia. Got it right. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you. So um, please tell us a little bit, what is this organization? Well, um, to, to, to start, ABIM uh, has been uh, in Malaysia, been established in Malaysia since 1971, actually. Um, and just wow. last year, we, we embarked uh, on the 50th anniversary of ABIM uh, in oh. Malaysia. And yes, we, we've been, <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for that. And, and also, uh, shout out to uh, our current central committees for, for giving uh, a such uh, inspirational effort in uh, sustaining ABIM right until this now. And yes, to, for information, ABIM has been led um, by leaders which, uh, which we, by the age of 40 years and below ever since its establishment since 1970. So yes, we have uh, changes in the, in the leadership and also um, today and abim also has a student wing and which i was lucky enough to be part of uh, their student wing uh, especially That's at right. the uh, state level and also the national level so yes to, to start now how did, to, of, to start of it, uh, yes how, how did you first hear about abim um it's it's since when uh, i just finished high school i'm looking mm -hmm. forward to uh, furthering my uh, studies at the university. And Abim came across uh, with a program to expose the uh, university life. And that's when I, uh, I, I know Abim, I found Abim. And straight away, they have these uh, programs uh, in school, uh, which uh, you can be facilitators in, in um, running the, the module given education. And yes, yeah, since then, I've been very actively involved as facilitator for ABIM uh, voluntarily and be it at school or any universities uh, and yes, uh, furthering down the years, also held some position uh, for the student wing of ABIM and right now, fast forward to this year, uh, I'm the, uh, the executive committee for ABIM in the state of Selangor. It's one of the 14 states in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the overall goal of ABIM? And yes, uh, one of the what is mission or vision is the uh, is to lead and also create. Um, we call it a, in 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 the context of uh, the Khoira Umma. It's the the betterment for the people, uh, especially in the Muslim world, and also uh, because ABIM located in Malaysia, we want to do that in uh, in the in the land of of this of this of this country, and then not not only the programs being um, promoted uh, in in the lifestyle of um, Muslim per se, but also uh, in its Malaysian context as well. We want to pursue that. So yes, uh, ABIM has been here since seventies and fifty years. Uh, we've been sustaining doing that. Uh, with all sorts of program also um yes be it physically and then uh, after post pandemic we do it uh, online virtually 
and yes all the efforts uh, has been there and with abim uh, we create uh, many leaders and also one of the uh, yeah many famous political leaders also uh, came from the uh, came from abim as well and yeah but by that only uh, i'm also hoping to become one of the uh, future leader in uh, if if it's in Malaysia or in the state, uh, so yes, I've been has really uh, educated uh, many people across the world, across Malaysia, uh, to to be exact. And yes, uh, yeah, we 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 hoping to do so in the in the next future as well. Mm -hmm. Now you were saying earlier that so many Malaysians want to create a country that gets past religious discrimination, prejudice, racism, and has a, a culture and a society that is welcoming to all. How does a, a beam contribute to that change? Do you have workshops, community projects, trainings? What kinds of activities do you do? All right. Um... Yes, since uh, 1980s, this one is 1980s, where we have this uh, one annual, annual grand meeting, uh, inaugural speech by, by then president. Uh, and we discuss uh, on promoting social cohesion and peaceful coexistence. Although during that time, uh, the term social cohesion or peaceful coexistence is not, is not being used, but uh, the, the idea is from there. And then, um, yes, ever since I've been playing a huge role in uh, multi multicultural societies uh, in Malaysia, uh, they even set up a group called Friendship Group uh, for Interreligious Societies, uh, or in short, FGIS, in order to preserve uh, the message of peace, living together as a united nation or united people. And yes, differences will always be there regardless of ideology, space, um, your uh, maybe political ideologies, but it's how we accept and also uh, acknowledge that uh, those differences in order to have a peace uh, within our communities. And one of the examples that I've been working with Abim uh, recently and uh, also joining the symposium uh, hold by uh, Asia and U USA uh, Prospect, which is the uh, counter violent extremism project uh, where we uh, we module we we make a module uh, based on the topic of youth against extremism and yes from this from this pro project alone uh, we we managed to um, uh, organize it in five cohorts and thank you so much to the ministry of youth and sport in malaysia for the co collaboration in this efforts to bringing the message and promoting the message of peaceful coexistence within our societies Let's talk about peaceful coexistence for a moment. Now, yes. everyone who is an observer of U.S. culture uh, can see that we disagree a lot. Uh, we have freedom of the press. We have freedom of speech. So we have a lot of different opinions expressed. And sometimes people get very frustrated with each other because they just don't agree. So what does peaceful coexistence to mean to you? Please unpack this concept a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. As, as I said just now, uh, we have uh, differences among us. Uh, yeah, be it uh, but common common differences in Malaysia is yeah ideologies and uh, especially in uh, in politics, we have di we have very different perspectives. We have different <laughs> backgrounds on on agreeing in a uh, subject matter that are close to us, and yeah by uh, because peaceful coexistence is really belief on the on how we can coexist together, um, and yes, uh, in in achieving this uh, peaceful movement of peaceful uh, setup, uh, accepting and acknowledging the differences uh, plays a huge role. And uh, in order in our action or our 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 action beyond really. Uh, really matters to us and uh, in how we see each other and to not having this discriminatory thoughts or racism thoughts uh, right after we, we we see each other and 
and it also depends on our way on perceiving um, subject matters as well to us. So yes, in this peaceful coexistence uh, subject, uh, which uh, we introduced by our one of the our scholars that we refer, and uh, uh, the late uh, uh, Professor Dr. Sidik Faril, uh, we also uh, become becoming uh, this this topic becoming uh, the most important. Uh, topic uh, in our discourse uh, because it, it existed from from having dialogues and to uh, peaceful coexistence. It's not just only having dialogues that we we simply said our differences, but we have to find the common values uh, between that. Because yes, uh, all the religions in the world, uh, uh, I should uh, I would say that uh, all religions do not do not want to see evil evil things from within. So the the common values that we we want to promote uh, and by uplifting these common values, these moral values, uh, is really the way or of us uh, having this uh, peaceful coexistence in uh, in our daily lives. I can say I can say that. Completely agree. Uh, the first step to peaceful coexistence is finding areas in which. Uh, in which you agree <laughs> with your your neighbor, the people that you're meeting, because yes. it's super easy to find areas where we disagree, because people have different religions, different politics, different policy solutions, but, so it's easy to find those. So sometimes just focusing on, well, what do we agree on? Like, do we yes. like the same food? Do we like the same music? That's why, There's the, always that's why I said, something. Uh, the, the common values be, uh, common between values. us. Between, yeah, for yeah. example, in Malaysia, we have a multicultural society. Malays, we have uh, Chinese and Indians, also from uh, ethnic, ethnic from Sabah and Sarawak. So we have many different ethnics, but uh, from the dialogue of, uh, of uh, acknowledging uh, everyone's uh, common values and also uh promoting this convenience it's it's a start mm -hmm. it's a start it's a start exactly i just want to uh pause for a moment to say a shout out to bagus thank you for your comment nice to see you at another show and it's a reminder for the audience if you have comments you have questions for fami please share them with us even if you found this show uh, on a at a later date and recording you can still share a comment because we see them and we share any questions or ideas that you have for fami so Fami, you seem very passionate about finding a way where people can connect with each other, reduce extremism. Were you always like that? Were you, uh, did you, did you have those values as a child or did they develop over time? Uh, I believe it developed over time uh, because I, I always uh, becoming the middle person of um, be it in, in meetings or in uh, always become. I always like to become the moderator <laughs> for each of any mm -hmm. conversation or any uh, collaboration uh, that I've been I've been with since. Uh, I can say since my university days, I've been mo the most active person uh, at that university. Look, <laughs> I can say that. So you want to be in my chair? You want to be interviewing uh, me? <laughs> maybe someday. <laughs> someday. So when you were when you were growing up. Did you have role models who inspired you to want to be that moderator, want to be that peace builder? Um, yeah, the closest one to me, uh, basically my father. And because uh, he's one of the, uh, right now he's a lecturer, I can say he's a lecturer. <laughs> lecturer gi giving workshops to contractors uh, out there. And then uh, that's, that's my father. Uh, and another inspiration that uh, I see, I see that uh, across uh, my university years, uh, in involving with activism, uh, is a leader called Anwar Ibrahim. Uh, I I'm lucky enough to happen to know him uh, in the context of non-political side, because yes, uh, uh, he's well known for his uh, political aspect leaders, but. Uh, because he he also uh, uh, one of the president of Abim, but back in his youth days in in 1970s, uh, which then he also led a, a movement and also 
uh, let some issue uh, let issues to to be solved in 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 the communities and in societies so knowing him in that aspect or that perspective really give me inspiration um, to really uh, become uh, a messenger of peace building yeah and also uh, during his time uh, when uh, when he when he's when he was in the government and also uh, came a resolution came from abim to uh, to establish um, a, a islamic bank and also the international islamic university of malaysia during his uh, his time as a minister of education also uh, and abim's resolution uh, from their annual grand meeting in forwarding uh, that issue and right now uh, those two those two, I think, I believe, big, big things. Those two big ideas. Uh, Islamic Bank, also the uh, International Islamic University of Malaysia, established in Malaysia because of, uh, yeah, this, these two, or should I say, uh, back then Minister Anwar Ibrahim and also uh, Abim plays a huge and important role in establishing that. So that is one of the uh, key moments that I think I am very truly inspired uh, from the leadership from Abim and also from uh, Nurahim himself, yes. Excellent. Sounds like an amazing man. Maybe I'll get to meet him someday. Do you, ha yes. do you have any... Yeah, you should, you should um, meet him someday. All right, I hope I do. Maybe I'll get to visit Malaysia and you'll introduce me. We'll all have tea together. Yes. So are there any American role models who inspire you? um because i grew up watching this guy and uh i'm also amazed when he's on tv uh, <laughs> uh but it goes by the name dwayne johnson <laughs> dwayne mm -hmm. the rock the johnson. rock the rock yes because uh, i'm gr growing up uh watching uh yeah watching his uh he, him on the tv and also uh knowing our post post tv moments uh we where uh, we became uh, one of the big, one of the biggest name in in Hollywood, and then uh, in that sense of um, his resiliency and uh, becoming a successful person as of now, because he also mentioned uh, in his documentary that uh, he only have ten ten dollars in pocket and don't know where to do, mm -hmm. don't know where to go. Uh, he also yeah one of the prospect of becoming a, a American footballer, but. Um, yeah, things don't don't go his way, and then straight away, and the determination and re resiliency made him what is uh, his today. And also, it's also the uh, inspiration for for other generations in uh, that particular purposes. And then, yes, um, I, I know he he thinks a bit of becoming uh, uh, maybe run for the office, but we're not sure about that. <laughs> we we'll see that soon. <laughs> maybe maybe I root for him. For, for doing so? We never know. Yeah. He definitely has the charisma and a huge following. Yes. So we'll see. There, politics constantly has surprises for us. Yes. So I did Very want to. I did want to. Yes, yes. Yeah. I did want to shift gears a little bit and mention that April is coming. And this is a very special time of the year because Muslims will be celebrating Ramadan. Jews will yes. be celebrating Passover. Christians will be celebrating Good Friday and Easter. And plenty of other religions and peoples will have cause for festivities as well. So everyone's going to be celebrating. Although, with a few exceptions, most of them will be celebrating separately. So my question or for you home. is, as, yeah. if, as someone who cares about interfaith dialogue and connecting people, what do you perceive as the biggest barriers? What, what keeps people apart? What keeps people from understanding each other? Um, one of the challenges that uh, I can see throughout uh, my uh, active participation in promoting interfaith dialogues and also um, this, this effort uh, especially when uh, I think one of the barriers is uh, getting to know or having knowledge uh, in each other's uh, perspective because yeah some of us uh, some of um, Muslims uh, do not know much uh, regarding Hindus for example or some mm -hmm. of uh, Buddhists do not much do did not know much regarding Muslim so by having these dialogues and by, by having this openness of 
um, interacting with one another uh, makes us really want to uh, really promoting in that sense uh, this whole coexistence uh, area and then uh, yeah, this, this the challenge of knowledge being uh, or the disinformation that we know that we, we know out there. Uh, for example, uh, when you're having uh, too too many WhatsApp groups uh, forwarding uh, the hateful speech or the mis disinformation of Muslim or or Buddhist or or Hindus, so these these are the challenges that uh, we we are facing right now. So the the openness of uh, each and every one of us to really get to know each other. Uh, it's really one of the uh, action that we we need to take and uh, promote as well, um, because not always uh, we we can see uh, our friends from a different faith, a different faith um, praying in 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 front of us or actually, uh, for example, in in we are ten days away from Ramadan. Uh, it's a holy month from uh, for Muslim, and we are fasting uh, uh, for 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 the whole month. Um, one of the examples that can uh, I, I promote and also um, give out to you guys is that uh, we can also uh, organize a fasting or, or open the, uh, break the fasting together. Mm -hmm. that the ceremony of breaking the fast together uh, with our friends from uh, different religions as well. So for us to know and deeply understand on how can we uh, manage um, misconceptions uh, manage disinformation um, by experiencing uh, the the un uh, the unreligious side or not really not related directly to religion to the religious belief and also religious activities just by understanding and also experiencing uh, the daily life of of our their different friends. And we can't just wait for other people to do the to do, to, to open their arms. We have to open our arms yes. and invite people to it, it our comes, celebrations. Uh, it, it, it must come from within. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hmm. And let's say you had a new acquaintance or a new friend who WhatsApps you a a joke that you felt was offensive or mocked people. How would you handle that situation? How would you advise people to, because you don't want to just yell at the person that won't change yes. his or her heart. You have to- We, we don't want to be reactive, but we want to be responsive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some, so, uh, yeah, if what I, are some if powerful I words? What are some powerful words you would recommend using to try to open someone's heart, change someone's mind? Mm, I should say that uh, before before uh, um, re reply it on on the WhatsApp, uh, I should I should use the the approach of calling them, uh, because mm -hmm. yeah we, we want to say the message yeah. straight to the heart, uh, mm -hmm. not by reading because when we type something uh, some words it may interpret uh, between different emotions, so that's why we have to call them. Uh, or set up meeting directly face to face with uh, with our friend there who, who WhatsApp us, and yeah, the the word is empathy. Uh, yeah, empathy. And what if um, our family members uh, in those positions uh, receiving remarks and su in such ways? And yeah, by understanding and also because it, it is our friend. Uh, we we want to we want him or her to understand uh, what's really the situation is all about and also what is the the information that is uh, is uh, what is the truth of the uh, information that uh, they receive. So that's that's one of the approach that uh, I would take. And yes, by being responsive enough uh, for our friend there and not being uh, reactive, it's being responsive. And also we, we listen, advice. yeah. Don't have a very serious conversation over text. That is a, a wonderful piece of advice. <laughs> Invite the person to tea or at least talk on the phone, but that way you're really having a dialogue and listening yes. to each other. And a lot of miscommunication happens over email and text. If you really want to connect with someone, 
make it personal. That's excellent advice. Now you've done, and Abim has done, many different programs on countering violent extremism, interfaith dialogue. The U.S. government has been proud to support Abim with various projects and will continue to do so. If someone from our audience is interested in Abim or learning about more about you personally, uh, where should they go? How should they be in contact with you? All right. If you want to know more about Abim, you can uh, go to our website, uh, www.abim.org.my uh, to get to know more about Abim and uh, our activities as well. Uh, for international participants, uh, yes, we do have engagement uh, with our international bodies and also uh, with our students who are studying overseas as well. Uh, so looking forward to meeting you in person if you want to know more about Abim. And yes, you can follow us on every social media platform that existed. And we just created a TikTok account just for your, for your information. Great. And we'll, we'll add links in the description below. We're just about out of time for me, but I do want to know what's, what's on tap for you? What's your next project? Uh, what are you excited about? Um, in one particular project I am I am excited about is uh, the um, I'm I'm pursuing uh, uh, I'm pursuing master's degree, um, planning to pursue a master's degree on uh, on data science, uh, in the field of politics and policy making. So I bet after uh, this my my personal aspiration after uh, being completed the master's, uh, I want to build. A, um, a data science field in uh, efforts in order to um, for us as CSOs, uh, civil uh, society organization, to re to have micro targeting uh, advocacy strategies, and because we cannot uh, just straight away do programs without any um, without any uh, purpose or without any focus. So by by utilizing the tools of data science or, or utilizing the big data analytics. Uh, we might uh, can really uh, focus on the um, focus advocacy on on how we want to tackle uh, issues uh, within our communities. So that that may be one of the uh, future projects that I want to be involved with. And this CVE project as well. Uh, we we did this CVE project uh, in 2021. We hope to continue uh, in in this year. And also, we really hope that we can uh, run the program physically. Uh, no, oh, no yes. more uh, in, yes. in the Zoom session <laughs> because we really all want to, eager uh, be, to be together. Yes, yes. Uh, when we want to break out, uh, break out uh, between our groups, we want to be physical uh, in uh, sitting on a chair in a group, uh, not in the breakout yes. room. So <laughs> yes. that's one of the one of the human uh, to human that, uh, interaction. Have. Yes. 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 <laughs> and I really appreciate what you were saying earlier about policy making. That policy making should be connected to research and data, not just opinion, but there's lots of methodologies to determine whether the policy really is the best solution for a problem. And we need to be all working together to find the appropriate data and the best solution. Yeah. So that's uh, lots of good uh, advice. One that can describe that is a data-driven solution. Data-driven solutions, yes. I've heard that phrase. Uh, uh, we should use it as often as possible. It's a good one. Yep. Well, you gave us <laughs> lots of good advice today. And one thing I will definitely remember is don't text a serious conversation. Make that call, get together, have some tea, <laughs> and really discuss it. And that's how you make change. Connecting with people, finding common values, conversation, listening, all great advice. Well, Fami, thank you so much. Again, I really appreciate everything that you're doing and Abeam is doing, everything that the uh, communities of faith are doing to connect to counter violent extremism. There's so much we can do together if we connect and share and learn from one another. And you are part of that. So thank you so much for all your good efforts. Thank you so much, Mr. Jason, as well. 
All right, and to our audience, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciated this conversation. I hope you did too. If you have recommendations for other Southeast Asians we should interview, please put those, put those suggestions in the comments below. Thank you so much, and until the next time. Take care, everyone. Bye.